The M5 has been a staple in BMW's lineup for a little over 36 years, and you can certainly make the argument that no generation wears the badge quite as well as the E39. For some, the E39 is the last real M5 that exhibits pinnacle BMW engineering when their design was modest and performance was engaging. Even today, there's no shortage of hype surrounding this unassuming sedan. So naturally, I took it upon myself to figure out how much it would cost to purchase the legendary E39 M5 so you wouldn't have to. But first, let's take a trip back to the late 90s. Production for the North American spec began in September 1999 for the 2000 model year and ended four years later in June 2003. During that time, a little over 20,000 M5s were built for all markets, which is actually more than the previous two generations combined, with nearly 10,000 E39s making it to American soil. BMW undoubtedly had high expectations for the E39 and proved that they weren't afraid to shake things up by ditching the beloved inline six for something completely new to the M lineup, a 4.9 liter V8. When you look at the performance figures, it immediately becomes clear why the E39 was showered with superlatives in the early 2000s. Capable of producing 394 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque, the S62 will scream to its 7,000 RPM redline with help from its double Vano system and eight individual electronically controlled throttle bodies. All of this performance wrapped up in a sleek and luxurious package came at a cost though, with most brand new E39 M5s falling somewhere between $70,000 and $75,000. But that was two decades ago, so in today's video we're analyzing every E39 M5 sale on the automotive auction site Bring a Trailer to see how time has influenced the value of these cars. Along the way we'll talk about which color combos demand a premium and discuss how model year, mileage, condition, and number of owners affect the ultimate sale price. Let's get into it. All right, so after analyzing over $5 million worth of E39 M5 sales on Bring a Trailer, the first sale in our data set dates back to October 2014. It's worth noting that sales really didn't start picking up until July of 2016, which leaves us a solid four and a half years of history to work with. In that time, Bring a Trailer has hosted a total of 240 E39 M5 auctions, with 82% of those auctions resulting in a sale. For the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the 197 M5s that were sold. The cheapest M5 was a 2000 model year dressed in titanium silver with a black sport interior that had seen 144,000 miles, nine owners, and came with a clean Carfax that sold for less than 10 grand in September 2018. More recently, there was a 2002 Sterling Gray M5 with 141,000 miles on the clock that sold for just under $14,000 in November 2020, although this one did have some imperfections. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the most expensive M5 was a one owner, 2000 model year draped in Le Mans blue with the Silverstone Sport interior and only had 41,000 miles on the clock that sold for $75,000 in April 2019. What makes this particular car special is the Dynan S3 pack that was installed in 2006, which includes the number of performance-oriented upgrades that allow the S62 engine to crank out an advertised 621 horsepower and 502 pound-feet of torque. Dynan achieved these impressive numbers by installing a centrifugal supercharger, high flow intake, larger throttle bodies, tuned velocity stacks, stainless headers, and several other modifications that reportedly set owners back an additional $70,000 at the time of install. Since there were no special packages offered for the E39 from the factory, Dynan's array of mechanical upgrades is said to improve upon a vehicle that was already extremely impressive, all while offering a four year, 50,000 mile warranty. We'll take a look at how those cool little build plates enhance the E39's value later, but before we do, you need to know that the average M5 in our data set sold for just over 25.5 with 88,597 miles on the clock, while the median car rang in right at $22,000. Despite the pandemic, 2020 has been the best year yet for E39 M5's auction on Bring a Trailer, with 56 cars sold for an average price of $28,791, and 2021 seems to be continuing that upward trend. In fact, the average sale price during COVID increased by a little over $1,800 when compared to the preceding 12-month period, even with increased average miles and more units sold. Our data set supports the assertion that values likely bottomed out sometime in 2016 and have slowly been creeping up ever since. Now let's talk color. The most common exterior color sold in our data set was titanium silver at 46 units for an average price of $24,221. The second most common color was carbon black which sold 37 units for an average price just shy of $26,000. The most expensive color was oxford green which sold 3 units for an average price of $38,750 while anthracite metallic occupies the bottom position with an average price of about $18,250. $52. Obviously, you'd expect the specialty colors to rank toward the top, but I still think it's interesting to see how each color falls within the lineup. Moving to the interior, there are two overarching upholstery options available for the E39, sport or luxury. I don't want to get super technical here with what distinguishes the two, but I'll include links in the description if you're interested in more detail. So aside from the available color options, the easiest thing to remember is that the luxury seats have vertical stitching while the sport seats do not. 
When looking back at our data, it's pretty clear that not much separates the two in terms of sale prices. Maybe you could argue that the Sport option has a slight advantage, but that's likely due to the larger color variety offered over its executive counterpart. Le Mans Blue proved to be the most desirable sport interior at an 18.7% markup over black, while Carmel occupied the top spot for the luxury option with a 19.2% premium over its only counterpart. Bringing all of the interiors together, it's clear again that the specialty colors prove to be value adders in our data set. Now, what about those dine-in upgrades we were talking about earlier? Dine-in offered four signature series options for the E39 that came with serial numbered plaques and a warranty, but these packages are not to be confused with the staged engine software and suspension setups they offered separately. Here's a breakdown of what each signature series package included. Some important things to note are that the S and S1 packages are largely the same, except that the S1 package offered Dynan Stage 1 suspension upgrade. The S2 package is where you see considerable performance gains without the help of forced induction, and then the top of the line S3 M5 is where you'll find the supercharger we talked about earlier. Unfortunately, our data set only saw the S2 and S3 variants, but it's clear that these packages are value adders. In fact, S3 M5 sold for about 2.3 times more than the standard M5 on average, while the S2 M5 sold for one and a half times more. Next, we're talking mileage. And as you'd expect, cars with lower miles are going to be considerably more expensive than cars at the upper end of the mileage spectrum. Following the trend line, M5s with 50,000 miles average just over 30 grand, and M5s with 100,000 miles average almost $21,000. Obviously, there are cars above and below the trend line depending on the specs and, more importantly, condition, but it still helps to see how mileage affects the price of the E39. When considering the practicality of this super sedan, finding low mileage examples is proving to be increasingly more difficult. But that doesn't mean you should shy away from the higher mileage E39s that come with the soft solid service history. While we're on that train of thought, M5s with a clean accident history sold for about $2,600 more on average than cars with reported damage. Now, obviously there are ways to get around reporting some cases of damage, so we're going to stay surface level on these figures. Just know that our data set supports the assertion that an imperfect accident history isn't going to destroy the E39's value, so long as the necessary repairs were addressed comprehensively and everything else with the car shows legitimate care. Something else I like to keep in mind when looking at a vehicle is understanding how many times it has changed ownership. For our data set, it comes as no surprise that one and two owner M5s take the top spots in our list at just over $35,000 and slightly under $29,000 respectively. But it's clear that once you hit three owners, the value shifts away from ownership and likely toward the standard mileage specs and condition. Last is model year and condition of the car. It's important to note that there were no major mechanical changes to the E39 M5 during its four year production run. However, there were several equipment related updates introduced for the 2001 model year. Most notable are things like the park distance sensors that were added to the front bumper, a new steering wheel that is identical to what you'd find in an E46 M3, the addition of gray instrument faces, as well as updated headlights and taillights, just to name a few. As you move to the 2002 and 2003 model years, any further changes are essentially limited to exterior color options. When looking back at our data set, it's evident that we actually have a pretty decent sale distribution among the four available model years, with very little price difference between the 2000, 2001, and 2002 M5s. We're literally talking about a spread of $195 between these three years. The E39s that fall within the final year of production saw the the highest average sale prices at $28,700 and 43 auctions. What's interesting is that when comparing our observed bring a trailer values to Haggerty's valuation of the average E39, you see that Haggerty projects a marginal value increase for each successive model year, despite the fact that there's little difference equipment wise after 2001. Now, if you're looking at an M5 in above or below average condition, here's a look at how Haggerty's valuation breaks down by model year. Feel free to pause the video here or jump over to Haggerty's website that I've linked in the description so you can take a look at the tools they have available over there. I have to admit this is definitely useful information if you're serious about the E39. Ultimately it's no doubt that we're talking about an enormous price range here that peaks at an impressive 108 grand and bottoms out at $12,700. Our bring a trailer data reflects this sentiment of wide ranging values but seems to trend lower than Haggerty's estimates. It goes without saying that these cars, and really any car for that matter, are only worth what someone is willing to pay for them. And in the auction format, it really only takes two exceptionally motivated buyers to send a listing soaring. If you do a quick nationwide search for E39s currently on the market, you'll find a large spread of asking prices with specialty dealers like Enthusiast Auto Group at the very top end of the spectrum. In fact, according to EAG's website, they actually sold an E39 M5 with 3,000 miles for almost 200 grand. That's pretty incredible. But with that said, our data supports the notion that low mileage, well taken care of M5s from the 2003 model year that are painted anything other than the silvers, grays, and blacks are going to command the highest prices. 
On top of that, you should expect an additional premium for M5s that are fitted with Dynan Signature Series upgrades. Everything we've talked about today seems to suggest that the E39's value is steadily rising, but there are certainly deals to be found if you're willing to move quickly when you find the right car. Personally, I think it's hard to beat the value proposition of the E39 M5 when you can get one of the best performance sedans ever made for less than $25,000. But let me know what you think of this generation of the M5 in the comments down below. While you're down there, feel free to suggest a car that you'd like to see me analyze next and drop a like if you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.